is Fat Guy Flies RC. Well, I got another plane, if you can believe it. Um, this time from Banana Hobby. I haven't purchased anything from Banana Hobby and, and until I had that old um, um, L4, I guess what, L4 Grasshopper from Banana Hobby, which is basically the old Hobby King one in the uh, green uh, livery, green military livery. Um, so that's, that's the last time. Y'all remember how long ago that was. Well, this is from Banana Hobby. This is the Fly Fans Red Falcon K8 64 millimeter. Now, it, it's sold for, for $209 for plug and play. And that's whether or not you get 6S or 4S, it is the same price. But given that the KV from the motor is faster on the 4S version, it pretty, should pretty much fly the same either 6s or 4s and I have a lot more 4s specifically the you know the 2700 up to 3000 size I got many of those uh, one thing I found surprising now this is my first fly fan product that when I open the cardboard box from banana hobby there's the plane there's no inner box with you know um, graphics or anything on it just the cardboard and the plane, which is fine, it's very well protected, but I just found that surprising that there's no, you know, like you'd have an in-store shelf display type box. Okay, nothing on the bottom, so we can move the cardboard coffin out of the way. All right, and see everything is packed in there like a lot of these better quality planes would be. This plane comes with the shock absorbing um, metal gear. It's fixed gear, not retract, so I don't have to mess with that. And y'all know the problem I've been having lately with retracts. So, I just can't seem to get a, you know, get a brake cut to me on retracts. Now you saw the gear. Here's your little um, some double-sided Velcro with Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six screws holds the plane together. No glue assembly. Very nice um, elevator, horizontal stab uh, stabilizer. Um, two servos, ball link connection, which are already hooked up for you. They've got the servos taped down here so they won't get in the way. There's a nice carbon fiber spar that goes all the way through it. You can see it through there all the way through. So this is going to be nice and stiff and rigid. I'll probably, I will unhook these ball links and work those hinges. Um, carbon fiber spar for the wings. Okay. This is one wing. Very nice well, this reminds me of, oh, that's that metal where you hook the landing gear in. That is, that's in there. Yeah. Everything's hooked up. I mean, all your ball links are hooked up. Um, it looks like it is a pinch hinge with maybe laminate in there, but I will reinforce that. Okay. Got your drop tanks that have the hard plastic, they just key in. Oh, that's nice. This is a little disconcerting, a piece of foam just kind of sitting around in there. The other wing half, all the decals are decals, as my brothers across the pond like to refer to them as. Carbon fiber spar, Ah, uh, now that's, yeah, okay. Make sure the carbon fiber spar, check your wing. There's a big piece of foam stuck up in there. I would, I had to blow that out. All right, and then of course the main, main vent here is the fuselage. And your rudder is already hooked up for you. There is one thing that this model is definitely missing. 
no manual. So, but given how everything is already hooked up for you, and there's only six screws, shouldn't be that hard to figure out. I like the foam finish. You've got your two pilots there. Um, very, all the decals are already installed. The where you screw in, there it goes into brass fittings. This one, for whatever reason, huh? They've got. You look at you got real close. You look. You've got brass fitting there. Okay, there, right? Okay. Then there's. It's metal, but it doesn't have like a little collar on it. Whereas you look on this side, this is unusual. On this side, it's got like a little metal collar in there. And then here has a little metal collar here. So, I mean, there's metal in there. It just is, there's not a little ring around it, but I guess it'll be okay. Metal here. Where you screw in your uh, oh yeah there's your, there well there's your six screws two there and two on either wing and you're done and then you put your EDF is already installed okay so yeah let's take a look inside okay magnetic hatch or a magnetic tongue and sorry not magnetic it is a Tongue and groove with a latch for your hatch. Um, XT60 connector, lots and lots of space. Um, Chinese sticker there. Plenty of room, plenty of room. Everything is labeled uh, channel one, channel channel four. So it doesn't have, doesn't tell you what's throttle or aileron or anything like that. It just has labels channel. So I'll take my servo tester and figure out what everything is once I get it all installed. Um, your, and this is going to be a very, very simple build. Okay, all you're going to do, honestly, is you're going to take your wing spar, and run it through there, you're going to put on each wing half. There's quick connects. No, I'm sorry. I apologize. Not quick connects. It's the little, I think it's the little locking. See if you look in this cavity here. You'll need to, oh, by the way, get you a little tool like. I got these at Walmart. They're like next to nothing. Like, like $4 for two of them. Uh, and makes your life easier. Okay. Fish out your. Okay, so it says channel one on there and channel six. So channel one will be ailerons for, for this this for for the sake of argument here, and then channel six would be flaps. So make sure you fish that out there. Turn it around. You're going to fish fish it out here too. Same thing, channel six and channel one. Okay, and that's your for your hookups. Now, something that I have purchased, you can use tape for this, but I went on eBay and I got these little. I was, uh, sorry, I was actually surprised because it didn't show on, e, on on not eBay but on Amazon, it didn't show um, what brand these were. And I was very pleasantly surprised. But these are just little quick little, I think we'll say these were $3 each, each bag, and they come with 25 and they're just little servo clips, just a little, you know, you put, you got your two servo connectors here, okay, and all it does, it makes it so that where you have two servos connected, it's just a little lock-in-place thing to where your servos are locked together. Instead, you had to put tape and stuff over it. And they weigh nothing. They're plastic. So I'll be using that for these connectors. Now, 
for the wings, so I'll be using four of them. And then out back here, they have the little connectors, a little walk-in place. You see these little, little teeth here? Let's snap on either end of these here. Okay, snaps on either end of those and locks those in place. Because, you are you know, there's only two screws, but you're not going to be wanting to dig that in and out all the time. So, so that's that. I mean, we've got your two wing halves, your horizontal stab, and all these are, as far as you get your horizontal stab, your drop tanks, you know, and then you've got your internal stuff and your wing spar. So this is going to be a very, very simple build. As far as the landing gear go, um, if you want the plane to look scale, you're going to attach these, okay, with the wheels towards each other. If you want it to be more stable, you're going to attach it with the wings out. I mean, with the, the tail, with the, the wheels going out. And uh, these, are, these are pretty. I mean, they don't, they, they, those are things are, are tight. They really don't have much give. So I wonder if there's a way, I don't know of a way to loose or I might just have to work them a little bit. Or dump. Okay. And uh, and then you got the pedo tube that just screws into the front of the nose. But very small part count. You know, you're, you're going to put two bolts to hold your vertical uh, or horizontal stabilizer on. Your rudder is already done. You slap your wings on after you put, put your wing spar in. Slap your wings in. Bolt on your uh, landing. Your uh, Landing gear, which has grub screws in, already in place, there's one on either side. Flat spots are already on the bottom of this part of the metal, so you're going to grab those grub screws on those flat spots, and uh, it's on both sides, so it's not going to get turned around on you. I would bolt them in nice and tight, maybe put, instead of Loctite, because Loctite might drip out and get on your phone, which will destroy it, instead put just a little touch of CA on it, and that'll lock that in place. But um, there you go. I mean, really nothing to the part count. And this is going to be a very simple build. So let's uh, pause for now. And uh, we'll come back in just a little bit. Right after we got to put together. And if I come across anything that you need to know about in the build, or I've said, hey, looky here, um, I will tell you, I am going to undo all the ball link hinges. And I'm going to um, reinforce the uh, hinges. And how I do now have been doing that is I take a Q-tip, okay, I take this Gorilla Clear Glue, and I paint me just a real thin bead on that hinge, and then leave it alone. I don't put it in, I, I leave the hinge neutral, that way it's not, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of lock it or glue itself in place in any one position. Nice and but a very thin bead. That just gives me a little extra protection not having to put that ugly blender and tape on. It does the same thing. All right, well, there you go. Let's get her together, and we'll be right back. Uh, and don't forget, folks, faith, family, and friends, and planes. Love y'all, and God bless. I have to turn the camera off. Sure. Hey, back at Flies RC. All right, we got the Flyfans K8 um, Red Falcon all together. Now, six screws is what held together, two on each side of the wings, and two into the uh, horizontal stabilizer. All ball link, ball link connections were already um, hooked up for you, okay? One carbon spar goes in between. If you notice, I have the wheels to the outside, okay? And that gives you a little more stability. Now the nose wheel is very, uh, has some nice spring to it. The landing gear are a little stiffer, so you, you're gonna wanna when you land this plane, you want to bring her in and let her fly about an inch, a couple of an inch off the deck before you actually let her settle in. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot of bounce. Um, there was I haven't flown it yet, but all the control services and in the way that they have the linkages set up, there was zero trim needed except for the rudder. I did have to adjust the rudder a little bit. Okay, so that was the only negative as far as the trim goes. And of course, I've got to fly it and see. But as far as it being eyeball level and you run your fingers across, the, everything's flush with each other. Everything was spot on. So 
you'll have very little adjustment there. Elevators were perfect. Now, as far as the gear goes, you have grub screws on the front and on the back of the individual pieces. A one point, or maybe hold on. Oh, the tool's in my pocket. All the grub screws you need on this is done with a two millimeter hex drive. Okay? Two in the front, two in the back. Unscrew them to where they almost come out, slide them onto the flat. You'll see the little spud studs that stick out. They have flat places on there, and that's where those anchor in. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, same kind of front and back setup on the nose gear. However, the stud that sticks out that rotates does not have any flat spots. So what you may want to do is anchor it down, rice, kind of mar, hopefully that'll mar the metal a little bit, and then take you a file and make yourself a little rough place there so that this will anchor in. I haven't done that. All I've done is anchored it down nice and tight, took it outside, rolled her around, made sure she rolled straight, and then I made sure that was nice and locked in. Okay? That was, and that, so that's a negative there. The other negative is that no manual came with a plane. A manual, you show you, I guess you got to go online, download the plans, you know, but, or download the manual, but like Hobby King does. But, anyways, there you go. The other negative I had for in the build was the wing spar was perfect on this side. When I slid it in on, on this wing, it wouldn't fit. It kept binding. And the there those larger channel fiberglass tubes in the wings, well, they came out. So I had to keep fishing them back, fishing them back, and finally got where both wings would fit together flush, but very, very tight, almost to the point that it kind of pushes this wing out just a little bit. So you definitely want to test fit everything. Yeah, that might just be some foam way down in the channel that I couldn't get to. Who knows? Um, so that's that. But once I got all that all sorted out, the wings went together just fine, but very, very tight. Two screws, two screws, two screws for the elevator. Now, a um, couple of very positive things. Like I said, the all the control servers were hooked up, but little touches that make all the difference. When if you have to service this, there's already a little channel cut out there where you can put your uh, screwdriver in there. Um, that's the same thing here, same thing everywhere you've got a, an, an embedded servo. The uh, tanks are labeled right, left. Fan, of course, is already installed. Um, the plane looks amazing. This pitot tube, or a telemetry, whatever tube, uh, antenna, it just pops right in, slides right in, it goes in about maybe an inch. It's nice and tight. You don't need to glue it in. Just pull it in on and out. Take it off when you're flying. Maybe put it back in because if you hit the dirt, it's going to it's going to uh, cause your pole vault your plane. Um, but uh, that's that. Now, no manual, so no CG. So I had to figure out the CG myself. I have placed. I'm going to run this on a 2600 graphene 4S right there, so you can see where it's at. Okay. When I put my hatch on, you put your wings as high as possible when you try to check your CG. Okay, the landing gear is fixed. If you look right here, you'll see these little plastic bits, uh, plastic uh, doubler right here. About half an inch in, about, about a finger pad length into the graphics there. Same thing on the other side. So if you Feel that plastic and then put your finger in. You can see that plane. You get her up above and not stab myself in the neck. That plane does just fine right there. So about, uh, you see these plastic? Let me zoom in. See these plastic pieces right here? They're right here where this arrow comes down. You see a plastic? About half an inch or in is where you put your finger. Same thing on the other side. Feel for the plastic. And they go in about half an inch, and that's where she'll uh, CG for you. Got a cheater on the bottom, uh, big inlets in the front. The plane seems to have a. a better than one for one thrust ratio. 
Okay. So she got plenty of power. And uh, everything is steering on. on. My rates I'm running, this is low rates here. Or actually, this is, okay, this is low rates. And my rates that I have put in. Hold on, sorry. Okay, my low rates look like this. See the elevator? Elevator and the rudders. Okay, that is 70% over 15% expo. Okay, this is mid rates, which is 85% over 15% expo, and then high rates is 100% over 15% expo. Now, for flaps, okay, let me show you what my flap settings are. For cursors, up, you know, no flaps. This is takeoff flaps, which are on a spectrum, is a is your 50% positive over 0% elevator down. And then landing flaps are 0% down with 0% uh, elevator. Now, what I'm saying when I say 0%, I haven't figured, I don't have a manual, so I don't know if it calls out for any elevator mix with your flaps. I'll figure that out when the, for the, at the field. I'll probably start out with 10% down on takeoff and 20% down on landing on my elevator and see. I'll, I'll try it with zero first, then I'll try it with 10 and 20, and then I'll fluctuate back and forth. And the way you're going to figure that out is you try it at your uh, flap settings with no elevator mix, and you see. When you put your elevator, your down flaps in, your landing flaps, if she balloons really bad on you or dives really bad on you, then you're going to adjust your elevator accordingly, okay, your, your, your mix accordingly. Um, if your takeoff flaps, she still balloons too much or she dives on you when you're flying level, then you're going to adjust that elevator mix uh, accordingly. The Lots of times, um, some of these planes, they don't call, they don't, they don't, no mix is needed. Elevator is all you need. Um, the whole point is to slow your plane down and keep your plane level, okay, as you're, as you're uh, approaching. This plane does not have retracts. It has fixed gear, but it has flaps. It has two pilots. It is a 4S plane. You can get it in a 6S version, um, but the KV on the, uh, or not the KV, but the, uh, how quickly, I can't, the other number, the large number, I can never remember it. It turns a little slower because it's more powerful. Uh, on the four cell, the, the fan will turn a little bit faster. Um, so I'm thinking the speed is going to be just about the same on 4S or 6S. And uh, you might have a little more torque, but I might be wrong on that. But uh, look at that, look at that suspension on that front of that nose. That's that suspension there. I like that. And like I say, you got it on the rear, but it's it's much stiffer. So expect a little bit of bounce if you don't bleed off enough speed and basically touch down right before stall. So there you go, folks. That is the uh, Fly Fans uh, Red Falcon, 64-millimeter uh, bird. I want to say it's got a 3, 4, 5, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Six, yeah, six uh, 12 bladed fan and beautiful plane. Can't wait to fly it. Get a maiden for you. And uh, I'm sure I'm leaving a bunch of stuff out, but um, that's what I can remember to tell you. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and then planes. We'll see you later. Bye bye. Turn the camera off here. Bye.